The Shoreline Mafia are the biggest rap group that the West Coast has produced in recent years. Hundreds of millions of streams and clicks demonstrate how much the movement captured the attention of the fans. However, this movement came to an end in 2020 when the group disbanded. I'm RZY Machiavelli, and today I'm going to show you the story of the Shoreline Mafia. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, it's completely free, and also check out my second channel, where there's new content on current topics almost daily. Let's get started with the video. The rap group Shoreline Mafia consisted of a total of four rappers. The most well-known and essentially the faces of the group being Phoenix Flexen and OGC. The other two were Master Kato and Rob Vicious. In my opinion, it wasn't due to the musical talent of the other two that they weren't as well known, but rather because they weren't as comfortable in front of the camera. Phoenix Flexen and Ogeezy were usually seen together in interviews and vlogs. But Shoreline Mafia wasn't just these four rappers. It was a group of friends, about 30 people in total, all sharing the same lifestyle. Skateboarding, wearing hype beast clothing, and consuming many drugs. It was through these shared interests that this group of friends formed. The origins of Shoreline Mafia lie with Phoenix Flexen and Ogisi. The two tagged everything in their hometown of Los Angeles and did everything together. They shared common interests and brought friends along until it developed into a large group of friends. They had already adopted the name Shoreline Mafia long before they started with rap music. The idea for the name is said to have come from Ogisi, representing the place where waves break along the coast, symbolizing the group they wanted to create. And that's exactly what they did. The Mafia in the name was most likely inspired by 36 Mafia, simply because the members mentioned in interviews that they were their musical role models. Ojizi was raised by his mother while his father was arrested for drug offenses when he was only eight years old. I was a single mom, so I had to be his mom and his dad. I would get calls at all hours of the night. When I would be at work, I would get calls because he would be getting in trouble. Always, it was always something with him. According to his statements, his father was also a gang member. In almost every interview, Ogizi emphasizes that he didn't have a father-son relationship with him because his father was released from prison when Ogizi was 15 years old. My dad got locked up for like a real long time. And At what age? I was never, I was probably like eight, maybe, if I'm correct. And then I probably didn't see him again until I was like 14, 15. Uh -huh. And then he came back into my life and shit. And he was like trying to tell me what to do and shit. I'm like, bro, I don't even know you really. Like, I didn't grow up with you. Just two years later, his father was deported to Mexico due to legal issues. For this reason, Ogisi grew up with his mother. In contrast, Phoenix Flexen's situation was the opposite. His mother had severe addiction problems, which led her to leave Phoenix when he was still a young child. So he grew up with his father. Sorry, mama, just like you, I became a user. After Phoenix and Ogisi connected in their teenage years through graffiti, they initially had nothing to do with rap. All they did back then was tag everything and go into stores to steal and run away. They also financed all the hype clothes they wore all the time because they didn't have money. However, they never really had anything to do with gangs. They never joined one. They were just two guys causing a lot of trouble. Eventually, Ogizi started rapping on a laptop for fun, rapping over random beats. He didn't even consider it rapping. For him, it was just talking over the beat. But Phoenix Flexen was excited about it and asked him, Hey bro, are you rapping now? In the end, they spontaneously recorded their first track together, laying the foundation for Shoreline Mafia. What about the first ever song? Um, we were just messing around. I don't yeah. remember the bars. I remember. Uh, it was some song called Friday. It was a Space Ghost part beat that we uh, found on YouTube. Oh yeah, shout out Space Ghost. Within a week, the song got 100 streams on SoundCloud, which shocked them at the time. They thought, okay, that's a big deal. After about a month, the song reached 1,000 streams. The oldest songs by Shoreline Mafia are now nine years old, and their earlier sound had little resemblance to the group's current sound. Personally, their earlier sound even reminds me of the Suicide Boys. Tommy, by the Gucci, ain't talking by no hill figure. I've also noticed that the group experimented with many influences before finding their own style. 
You could hear influences from Chicago, DJ Mustard inspired beats, and basically everything that was cool back then. Just before the group could celebrate their breakthrough, two more members joined, Rob Vicious and Master Kato. Master Kato met Ogisi through a mutual friend and became relatively close with the whole group, eventually becoming a member. He's the only member who isn't from Los Angeles. He was actually born in Chicago and moved to Los Angeles at the age of 12. The fourth member is Rob Vicious. Fenix Flexen met him while producing music. At that time, Rob Vicious lived right around the corner from Fenix Flexen's ex-girlfriend. At that time, the two recorded a lot of music together, spent a lot of time together, and became close friends. Rob Vicious also produced some of the old Shoreline Mafia beats, so it was only a matter of time before he became a member of the Shoreline Mafia. In this constellation, the group worked together for a total of four years and built up a very good fan base organically. Especially in Los Angeles, they made waves because they brought a style to the city that hadn't been seen before. At that time, only artists rapped on West Coast beats who were tough and hardcore. They rapped about gangs and things that happened in Los Angeles, and Shoreline Mafia showed the completely different side of Los Angeles. They showed the whole emerging youth culture that celebrated the buy and drank lean. The beats they used were also not typical LA type beats. They were more beats from the Bay Area, which is the area of San Francisco and Oakland. I just mentioned earlier in their rap texts, drug use was thematized a lot. It was actually similar to the rapper Future. Eventually, certain drugs became the group's trademark. Even in their interviews and on social media, they never made a big secret of their consumption of lean, Xanax, weed. They pretty much took everything but lean was the group's trademark. I think the dangers of these substances are clear. Always take care. Their first music video was shot by a small videographer named Lexis Grand and uploaded to his YouTube channel. No one back then thought that Shoreline Mafia's videos would explode like they did. The first music video that went viral was Home Invasion. Shortly thereafter, Fox News, one of the largest news networks in the USA, aired a report on lean, aiming to educate people about the dangers. Throughout the report, they continuously featured Shoreline Mafia and their music videos, including the song Home Invasion. It was a bit random back then that Shoreline Mafia was singled out as an example because they weren't really big yet and rappers like Future were actually addressing the same issues. So it turned into a meme, especially in the community. Shoreline Mafia even claimed that Fox News had asked for an interview, which they declined. Another music video featured in this report was the music video for the song Codeine Bryant. Both of these songs were recorded on GarageBand and the music videos were shot in Ogisi's old apartment. However, Ogisi later got kicked out of this apartment because his landlords had seen the Fox News report and didn't appreciate weapons and drugs being played with in their apartment. Just shortly after that, the breakout song from Shoreline Mafia was released and it was called Musty. The song went viral on SoundCloud immediately after uploading and gained huge numbers. The beat used here was actually stolen from Ron Ron, the producer. OGC and the guys just stumbled upon Ron Ron's profile one evening and picked out two beats they liked. One of them was the beat from MTI and the other was from Bottle Service. Bottle Service came out shortly after MTI and now has 30 million views. The first music video of MTI now has 73 million views. At this point, people across the USA and the world began to realize that a very special movement was emerging. And then there was the issue with the stolen beat from Ron Ron, the producer. Most producers would have made a fuss and demanded their money, asked to take the song down. But Ron Ron, the producer, loved it. He reposted the songs immediately after their release, and that's how the guys from Shoreline Mafia connected with the producer. In the end, a legendary collaboration was created because Ron the producer completely produced Shoreline Mafia's first official mixtape. Through the contact with Ron Ron the producer, the group connected with the Stink team. This is another rap crew from Los Angeles, which is much more connected to gangs. Some of you might know the face of the Stink team, which was Draco the Ruler. According to statements from Draco's little brother, Ralphie the Plug, Shoreline Mafia became more and more respected in Los Angeles 
through the friendship and collaboration with the Stink team, not just from the tougher guys, but also from the skaters and the hype beasts. In November 2017, the debut mixtape Shoreline Do That Shit was launched independently, and hits like Musty and Bottle Service were on it. But the most successful song on this tape was No Major. It felt like every other song on this tape used snippets from this Fox News report as an intro. For this reason, this report is also seen as legendary by the community. In May 2018, Shoreline Mafia signed as a group with Atlantic Records, and since that's a major label, people thought, okay, hey, we're finally getting a debut album from the group. But we were denied that for two years. The collaboration with Atlantic Records started promisingly. I mean, the music video for Musty was completely remade because it was still mainstream worthy. Then there was a re-release of the debut mixtape Shoreline Do That Shit, because the label ensured that this tape was released on all streaming platforms. But there's also a crazy story surrounding this deal, especially around Ogeezy, because until the day he signed the deal, he was selling drugs. He was driving around Los Angeles all day in his car selling cocaine. But he always swore that he would stop once he signed his first deal, and he did. He just gave everything away on that day, his bonnies, his stash, and he was clean. A day after signing, as fate would have it, there was a raid. Luckily, he didn't have anything anymore. He even says he would have gone to jail if the cops had found anything. Okay, the group has a hype now, they have a major label backing them. What could go wrong? People were hyped, but somehow Atlantic Records didn't feel like releasing the album. The Shoreline Mafia had music ready, they wanted to release their debut mixtape directly in 2018. But the label, unfortunately, caused problems. And so the hype around Shoreline Mafia faded over time. It wasn't too bad. I mean, there was still music. They kept releasing individual EPs. In July 2018, for example, Rob Vicious released the Traplantic mixtape, and the most successful Shoreline Mafia song on there was Bands, which has over 250 million views on YouTube today. This ain't a milli rock, this a money dance and my dick ain't hard, that's a dirty in my In December, OTX Mass was released, which was a small EP with eight songs, and the most successful song here was Pressure, which I also really like. In September 2019, the next EP, Party Pack Volume 2, was released. The most successful song on this EP was Wings, but personally I thought Fell in Love was the strongest. Love with the money, fell in love with the drugs. I fell in love with the drink, cause I'm stuck in the mud. Yeah, time passed, and by now it was 2020. The only positive news the fans got was the announcement of the album Mafia Business. But here's the thing, Phoenix Flexin announced on Twitter that he would leave Shoreline Mafia as soon as the album was released. For the group, this news was nothing new. According to all members, it had artistic reasons because everyone had a different vision. Because after Phoenix left the group, everyone pretty much split up and went their own way. And that was the end of Shoreline Mafia. Everything was made official. Outsiders who were close to the group at the time said in interviews that the label was probably to blame for the whole breakup simply because tensions arose. I mean, I can understand that. People get pissed off when no music comes out. People feel disadvantaged and things can be taken the wrong way. It was actually quite obvious that the label favored Phoenix Flexen and OGC and left Rob Vicious and Master Kato out. All members always emphasized that everyone was equally important to the group. However, it wouldn't be the first time a label destroyed the dynamics of friends. But what really happened, only those involved know. But on the same night that Phoenix Flex announced his resignation, something terrible happened. MCP Dog was killed. Breaking news right now a fatal shooting in Koreatown. Two people have been shot. In the same night that Phoenix Flex announced his resignation, something very terrible happened because one of their close friends and supporters, MCP Dog, was shot, which further burdened the group. You're probably wondering who is Mac P Dog? Mac P Dog was a rapper from the inner circle of Shoreline Mafia. A day one friend of Phoenix Flexen, with whom he went to high school, he had features with every member, was actually seen in the background in every interview, and was an important part of the dynamics. But unfortunately, he was shot in Los Angeles while sitting in a car with his girlfriend. Luckily, his girlfriend survived, but he didn't. On July 31st, the debut album, Mafia Business, was released, 
featuring Ogizi's hand on the cover with a tattoo that says R.I.P. Mac P. Dog. Fenix Flexen also released the track Rest in Peace Mac P. Dog shortly after his death. Personally, I find the song extremely powerful. It's one of my favorite tracks by Phoenix Flex and you definitely have to check it out. So, Mafia Business was definitely an album that was successful. It landed on the charts at number 27, had many streams, and was also very well received by fans. The problem is, the hype wasn't as current as it was back then. No wonder, I mean the group couldn't release an album, and I think so much potential was wasted. Who knows what kind of hits that thing could have made if it had been marketed properly and released at the time. As mentioned earlier, after this release, each member went their own way. Ogizi is now a successful solo artist. He has already collaborated with a lot of big rappers, and he owns the trademark rights to Shoreline Mafia. He secured those before all this rap stuff started. Fenix Flexen also started a successful solo career. He's my personal favorite member of the group and has released some really strong tapes. They're partly underground, but I personally think they're really nice. He's independent now too. Master Kato and Rob Vicious have unfortunately become very irrelevant now. Their songs are somehow only heard by 15,000 people. It's quite sad, even though I always thought they were musically really strong. But what made me very happy is that just recently, Fenix Flexen and Ogisi connected again. It looks like we're going to get a comeback from Shoreline Mafia. Both have teased something like that in interviews, and I would really like Fenix Flexen to get another hype. His music is really strong. So guys, who is your favorite member? Let me know in the comments. That was the story of Shoreline Mafia. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already and support me with a comment and a rating. Many thanks also to my brother T, who edited this video. Take care folks, and until next time, bye.